I'm just off for a little stroll to see what I can find to paint. Why don't you stay with me? Welcome to Simply Painting, I'm Frank Clark, and we're here on the road from Irish Lannan into Clifton in the west of Ireland. Behind me is a lovely little subject, it's a gateway, and that's the gateway to Irish Lannan House. And let me tell you a little bit about it. About a hundred years ago, there was an artist lived there, and this lady painted primitive type pictures, indeed not unlike those painted by Grandma Moses in America. And while I'm on about Grandma Moses, let's clear up a little point. I understood that she was an American Indian. In fact, she wasn't. She was of Irish descent. Her father was Irish. I'm not sure where her mother was from. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's get back to the subject. We've got the ideal little bits and pieces we need to paint a picture. We've got a gateway. We've got some whin bushes or gorse bushes, or we call them fir bushes. And on the other side of the gate, we've got an old bush here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go home to the studio, get my camera, come back, take a couple of shots, and then we'll go back and paint it. Well, here we are again. Did you enjoy Irish Lannan? Wasn't it beautiful? Yeah, and the little old gateway, wasn't it nice? I have a little confession to make to you. That actually was not the main entrance to Irish Lannan House. It was a side entrance, if you like, that they've let overgrow, but I thought it was nicer than the other one. Just thought I'd mention that, because I don't want the the new owners writing to me and telling me that that is not the entrance to their beautiful house. Okay, before we see what we did, let's once more talk about the materials. And starting with the paints, off we go. We got burnt umber, raw sienna, permanent rose, cadmium yellow, ultramarine, titanium white, vermilion hue, and thello green. That's the seven colours plus white. Next we have the three brushes, and we have the large brush, which we put into the water, We've got the medium sized brush, which we do the very same thing with, and the small brush, which we put to one side. We have our plastic palette, which we use to put the paint out on. And next we have water and we have a cloth to dry the brush with. And last, but by no means least, we have our canvas panel. And this time it's 10 by 14, so it's upright, therefore it's portrait. All right, you're getting the hang of this now, aren't you? Now let's look and see what we actually painted. And here we are, and we got the old gateway, and I particularly like the pier because it was falling down. Now there's something else I did with this picture which might be of interest to us. If you notice, they're not necessarily the colours of nature. And what I mean by that is the sky is a pinky colour, which it wasn't, it was blue, wasn't it? But you don't want to do that all the time. You want to kind of vary it to suit the room, so to speak. I've often been asked to paint pic pictures to suit people's wallpaper. You know what I'm talking about. And it gives you a chance to try out different colours, like the old masters did. Anyway, enough about that. We paint it in the same fashion, which is horizon, sky, middle and foreground, or have some more fun. You must know that off by now. That must be your favourite saying, is it? I hope it is. Right, pencil, ruler, and let's get at this. And first of all, we put in our horizon line. Now, let's see, the horizon line in this picture, to me, would represent the bottom of the gate would be a fair bet, wouldn't it? So, it's fairly high on the picture, but not quite halfway, so, there we go. How's that? Not quite halfway. Never, ever put your horizon line in the dead centre, because it breaks the picture in two. Doesn't look right. That's the only reason for it. Now, let's push the paints away, because we're going to get at this stuff. And the first thing we do is put out the paints for the sky. Yes. And as I said, they're different. We're different in colours this time. We're going to put out some white, as usual. And we're going to... Now, there's a couple we don't need, which I'm going to put to one side there. We're going to put out some raw sienna, which we put there. And we're going to put out some permanent rose, because there's a rosy colour in that sky, isn't there? Hmm. A rosy colour. Now, I'll put the rosy colour up there. Now, I'm going to perhaps use a little bit of blue, so we might as well put it out. Now, where does the blue go? Can you remember where I always put my blue? There. Except when I forget. And you know why I do that? Come on, tell me. Because I remember where it is. So if I automatically start dipping around, like playing the piano, they don't move the keys about every time you, you, you play, do they? Otherwise, you'll never be able to play it. Now, so next we look at now, and let's see, what are we going to start with? 
we're going to put some white and some blue first, a very light mixture. I would say 90% white and 10% blue, just a background. And we're going to scrumble that in. You know the word scrumble? Back and forward, rapid movements of the brush. You just see the faint, faintest kind of colour appearing on it, don't you? All right, now start building. Now we need blue and a tiny bit of the raw sienna and a little bit now of the permanent rose. That's starting to make this thing a yellowy colour. See that now? Yellowy, pinky colour. Let's see if that... Ah, look at that, look at that nice. Mmm. Now you can alter the colour. This is up to, up to you. You can decide. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the colour he's got there. My wallpaper's not that colour. So all I do is, look, keep scumbling away. There we go. Scumble, scumble, scumble. And if you want to make this, it's up, look, at, it's up to you. Make it any colour you like. I don't mind. You can decide. In fact, it's a good exercise to say, no, I'm not going to paint it pink. I'm going to have my sky brown or yellow or any colour you like. In fact, uh, what would you do if you only had three tubes of paint? You ran out of paint. You, the shop wasn't open till tomorrow. That's not the stuff you're painting, though, is it? Of course not. What do you do? You use the colours you've left with, huh? don't you? Now, I think perhaps a little bit of yellow in this because it seems to be getting a bit whiny looking to me. So let's mix a little bit of yellow in. See, this is the beauty of acrylic. I can mix in and mix in. Now, I haven't cleaned my brush at any stage this time because I'm using all those colours to mix. Now, I'm not going to take a little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow. Mix the two together. Oh, look at that. Look. That's the colour we had on it, wasn't it? That's how we got it. So, what did we do now? We started off and we, put a, we laid a background, if you like, in, didn't we? And now we're laying in the colour that we, we, we're going to stick with. See it? Now, how do you get that colour to look nice and clean, if you like, rather than leaving brush strokes in it, which I often do. Run the brush very lightly across the whole thing, and lo and behold, there it is. Look, you get a nice mottledy kind of colour. That's very close to what we're looking for, isn't it? Right. Don't worry too much if it's not exactly the same. I think I mentioned this to you before, because you could fight it, and you'll keep fighting until you end up with mud, mud, glorious mud. Now, I know it's difficult with acrylics to get mud because of the fact that they dry so quickly, but you can do it, you can, with, and you don't want it. Right, never mind all that. Let's next look now and see. We're going to put the background in. You always work from the back forward. You wouldn't put the gate in and then try and paint around it. So we need to put in some green. Now, how would you make green? You take some blue, some yellow, mix the two together, a bit of raw sienna, and away we go. Let's see how we're looking there. Yeah. Now we're going to do a little... Da, 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 da. If, that's, if it's too dark, lighten it. How would you like them? You add more yellow, don't you? Ah, look at that. Now, I don't like adding white unless I have to, to this colour, but unfortunately here, if I don't, it'll be too strong. So I'll do that. I want to get it to... See, I want to get it to sort of disappear into the background a little bit. Now, I'm using the corner of the brush. This is the dabbing area with the brush. So, don't worry about the pier. We can put that in later. And we go down the far side here now, up there a little bit there. So it's all over the place, sort of general dabbing in all directions. It's great fun. You can do this at the time of music, it's great fun too. I mean by that you go la 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 la. I see the brush, it's all. You don't have to uh, let your arm sort of become a musical arm. You're conducting, you're conducting this picture this time. Uh, blathered in a bit, haven't I? Now I think we're, we're going to come right down to, just to about the horizon line, which is about there. Now it gets a bit darker, do you notice that behind the gate, because it's in shadow. So let's do that. See? Dead easy this, you know. Now it's just, I'm just stippling. Do you ever hear the word stippling? That's dipping the brush like that. That's stippling. Well, you can stipple with it. Now by now you must be bashing out these pictures at a rate or not. Eh? So say, so say the, the lunch has gone by the, the wayside and the dinner and everything else because you do forget, don't you, when you're painting, time seems to disappear. Now I'm going to put a nice light bit in there. Because we're down at this, see, just, just about there. So let's give me that little gateway. So the way it's all begin to make a little bit of sense there. Little bushes here and little bushes there. Actually, they're not bushes at all. They're only dabs of paint. But, but they look like bushes. OK. I'd be happy with that now. Let's put that away for a moment. And let's give it a blast with the old master blaster. Right, off we go. Give it a good drive. Now, that's our secret weapon, you know. Because once we can do that, we cannot make mud. Because we paint in layers, don't we? I mean, could you imagine painting... I'll come back to the door again. Could you imagine painting a door, and before the first coat is dry, when it's half dry, going on with a second coat? Can you imagine the mesh it have? 
the very same thing with the, with the painting. If you can dry underneath like that, it makes it terribly easy. Now, oh, okay, let's look and see what we're going to do next. I think the pier must, must be due for a bit of an attack by now. And it's a kind of a leany thing, isn't it? Mm, let's look at that now. So we need to put out some brown. Do you understand what I was saying to you there, though? Could you imagine the mess you'd have if you tried to paint over the first coat before it was dry. Can you imagine them saying to you in the paint shop when you're going to say, I want to paint the garage door and I want to paint over it before it's dry, when it's half dry. The fellow think you are mad. And yet we attempt to do it when we're in paints, don't we? But then you have to with some mediums because uh, they take so long to dry, don't they? Now, I'm just outlining this thing. Look, it's only... D because there it is. I want to get the pier in. Do you see? Now, the pier goes up to about there, doesn't it? Then I come back down. And I'm sorry to say that it's leaning. It's like the leading tower of Pisa. You know what that is? That's in, in Italy. And due to subsidence, it's falling over, isn't it? And the same thing applies with this thing. But then I suppose we'd all be falling over if we're 150 years old, wouldn't we? Now, I'm outlining the dark side because the light's coming this away. Does that make sense to you now? You've done this several times before with peers and everything else that always. Put, just put in approximately what you want and then start to work. Now, I've enough done with that for the moment because there's another side to it here. So let me put the other side of this pier in and that'll give us the outline and then we'll know where to put our gate. It's about there somewhere. Isn't it? Now, you can put it in dark or you can put it in light. It doesn't make any difference because you've got the option then. I like to put it in light and darken it but and then finally come back and put a little bit of highlight on it. So I kind of make three goes of it. So I go dark, light, and then I go light again, or dark again. I always reverse myself. Now, does that make sense? Dark, light, dark. That's it. You know, I get it right eventually. Now, I don't want to come down any further. There's a rock here. Do you see it? I'm only outlining all this stuff now. Now, the gate's going to go in there eventually. Now, what have we got here? We have, have a look back at the picture. Ooh, we've got a fine big tree there. Do you see it? So why don't we put that in next? I think before I do, I like just a little bit of darkness there, because it's a little bit... Uh, always paint the background first. Ah, that's better now, isn't it? Yeah. Now yeah. look at that. The tree will go... We'll show the tree off against that, and while we're at it, we'll do a bit there as well. <laughs> Let's go over this thing. You're not, it's not written in stone, as I've said. Now there's something else. I'm painting here with an easel. This is an easel. And this easel I have is what they call a box easel. And a box easel is that it's an actual box with legs on it. And I can close it up, bring it off out if I want to go outside and paint. And when I come back in, then I open it up and I can use it in the studio. So it carries around like a carrying case. Now, it does have one tiny problem. It's not that cheap. It's an ideal, as I've said before, Christmas present or gift or that. So you could mention to the relations or whatever that your birthday's coming up, as I've said before, and that you'd be... Boy, would I love an easel. But if you don't have one, you don't need one. And in fact, if you're at home painting, just put this canvas board on the table, raise the back of it about two or three inches with a block of wood or anything go behind it, and that's perfectly all right. I often do it. So you don't need an easel. You have no excuse to say, oh, I can't paint with no easel. Rubbish. You can paint. Now, I'm just filling in this. That's one tree, and there's another one. There's kind of a bush, wasn't there? It's a hawthorn bush, not a hawthorn bush, that's what it was. Well, now, the other one is up there. Now, this is the small brush, brown paint only, with a tiny bit of blue in it. And as I, as I press on hard, it gets wide. And as I lift it off, it gets thin again. Now, I'm not looking too often at this bush. I don't want it to be exactly the same. It's not a mirror image of what I'm painting. Near enough. You want to... Be, uh, a good test with a painting is that if you look at it or if somebody looks at it and says, oh, that's, uh, that's Irish Lannan, because they won't know what the tree looks like either. They'll have a rough idea in their mind. If you don't believe me, go and look at any of the old masters and look at the places they painted. And I tell you, they're close, <laughs> but they're not a replica of them. And then they actually, you know, the business of moving mountains, which is very important when painting because... Uh, if you don't like the look of something, if there's a te suppose there was a telegraph pole here, what would I do with that? Ignore it, isn't that right? Paint it out. Yeah. The paintbrush is heavier than, or stronger than the bulldozer. Now, I'll get back to these easels again, anyway. Now, there's 
as I said, this, this was a box easel. Now, there are many other kinds of easels. There's a table easel, which I often use, and it sits on the table, and it's just a little upright thing, and it folds down flat when you don't want it. There's a metal easel, metal, which I use for watercolours, and will also do for acrylics. But you don't need them. They're not, they're, not, they're not an essential part, because the lovely thing about these boards is you can rest them on your knee. You can go out, rest them on your knee, and you can paint away. You don't need anything at all. Well, an easel, I do find an easel is a help, to be perfectly honest. Yes, it is. Now, there's a couple of little twiggy trees in there. Just to, I only want to just give look at the faintest outline. Now, this, this is not, don't make these too heavy, because these bushes are a bit back in the, in the background. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Ah, dee dee. I love painting bushes and trees, because uh, you're your own master, aren't you? You can decide what you want to do with them. There we are, look at that now. Now, we might need a bit more niceness around there, but we get around to that now. Grant. Next, uh, how about some yellow up here? You see, what I'm doing is this. As I'm painting over there, this is drying. See, this method of me madness. So I'm saving electricity. I don't have to use the hairdryer. Isn't that clever? Now, if I have to go over it, of course, I give it a blast to the hairdryer. Now, these are little tricks you learn, little, little things. Uh, now, there's another thing that sometimes I might mention. Have you ever heard of a stay wet palette? Well, I'll tell you what that is, and I'll tell you how to make it. It's very easy. If you're finding that you're in a very humid climate, for instance, or you're painting in the South Seas or somewhere, you lucky devil if you are, and that the paint is drying very quickly, there's a way of keeping it wet, moist, should I say. In fact, there's two ways. One way is this. That was just little dabs of yellow and white, just to make the top of the trees. They're in sunlight. Now, what you can do is this. You can take, did you ever see an atomizer? You know what I mean by an atomizer? Somebody, after shave, you can get perfume in an atomizer. Fill one of those with water and just spray the paints with water. And as long as they're moist, as long as that water is there, until it evaporates, the paint will not dry because that's the medium for acrylic. And how they keep them like that is they keep them moist. So if you keep them moist, they'll stay wet forever. You didn't know that, did you? And also, of course, if you wet them really, as I've said before, you can use them as a watercolour. Now, how are we getting on here now? He says, let's see. I think we should do a little bit something with this gate. It's a bit, uh, a bit flat looking. Now, the other way, by the way, to keep your paint dry is what they call a stay wet palette. Now, let me tell you what that is. Now, look, this is dabs of white only. See that? Because the stone over this side, of course, will be quite light. We'll put in the stone eventually. We'll mark in. Now, I suppose it's a bit there, and of course, naturally, that's going to be fairly white there, isn't it? Yeah. See, once you, you do that, see, that's highlights. That's what that's called. So if, you, if you're reading a book and it says the highlights, that's what it means. Light. White paint, that's all it is. Now, I think I'm getting pretty happy with all this here. I've got a good bit to go down here, so why don't I uh, give it a dart down there next now. Now, this is fairly light colour, isn't it? So I'm going to use... Raw sienna with some lemon yellow and a bit of this mess that I'm in here. Do you see, it, it's green and blue mixed. Let's see how it all looks. That's oh, not too bad. Now I'll have to use a bit of white here because I, it's a bit just a bit too dark, isn't it? So white, yellow, and a tiny bit of blue. So it's a very faint kind of. See it? Ah, that's better now. See? Now the roadway goes that way. See it? Something like that. So, my God, it's difficult, isn't it? I keep saying that to, to impress upon you just how easy it is. Now, look, there's a few little, I've taken some burnt umber, that's nothing else, just burnt umber, and I'm just dabbing it around the place. Do you see that? Because obviously there'll be little weeds and things. There won't be, there's nobody out here with a mower cutting this grass or with a scissors. So we've got to make it look like that, that it's pretty rough. Now the roadway. We can put it in, in a, what is it, a blink of the eye, isn't that the word we're looking for? Now the roadway is... Now try and get it that it looks a bit, it looks a bit up and downy there. I've got to put something nice in the centre there just to brighten that up. Now, before I do that, let's look at the road itself. We can't look at very much to be without some white paint. Remember I did tell you, you use more white paint than anything. But you'll still get an awful lot of paintings out of a tube, let me tell you. Don't, don't get mean with me now. Now blue, red, which will make a kind of a whiny colour, and plenty of white. And let's see what we've got. 
Yeah, it's not quite the right colour yet, is it? No, I'll put a bit of, how about a bit of yellow and rossy? And ah, I think that's, look, that's it. Look at what we're painting. How does that look? Let's have a look now. Yeah, that's near enough, isn't it? This is the road where a fella came cycling down it when we were shooting this thing and he nearly cycled over us. No brakes on his bike, I think. Now, I'm going to just outline now just this is the edge of the road. You see this? You know where the road meets the. How's that? Grand. Next. What's next now to do? Let's see the gate. How about the gate? Yes. Yeah, so well, this gate was falling down. Now it's. It's a black old iron gate, so to make a black old iron gate, what do you do? You put brown and blue together. Just mix the two. Now, where's the first bar of this gate was there. Now, don't draw this gate with a ruler, whatever you do. I, somebody came around here, they went with a ruler drawing the thing. The fellow who made this, he wasn't very stra straight either. And in fact, a shaky hand is, is all the better. See that? There's two. Now, it's fairly inky paint. In other words, I'm, look, I keep dipping into the water because when you want to create something like this, it has to be, it has to run like a pen, this, this brush of ours. And there's another one there. There's another bar of the gate. So we're heading over now. We keep going until we're happy. So we're never happy, are we? I'll tell you something, I defy you to think of something else. I don't care what worries or troubles you've got, I defy you to think of anything else and paint at the same time. Impossible. Yeah, there we are. We've got about five more bars to go, have we? Or maybe. Yeah, about that. This was made by a... This game was made by a famous iron worker, actually in Clifton. Yeah, there was a whole family of them called Finleys, and they all ended up, they spread all over the world. They became very famous people, very rich in the end, but this, this was a Finley gate. Hmm, nice, isn't it? So if you ever come across one of those, it's a collector's piece now. now and now that's a crossbar, look at that. Oh, dee dee. So it's leaning back a bit, do you see the way it, now, it's all kind of bockety. Oh, there's a bit in the bottom there, isn't there, the bar over there. Dee dee dee. So the pearl gates and bits, now. That's enough of that gate. Let's get on to something else now. We've got to get back to the, the rocks and the... I think we've got to fit in some nice... Um, some nice colour on that rock. Let's see now. What, how are we getting on? Oh, that's nice now. Yeah, now we, we, we'll be putting in some nice bars and things, but just to make it... And there'll be nice dark colours going in there in a second. Now, I think our next thing is... Now, let's do that. Now I'm using the small brush again and the inky stuff because I'm I'm kind of drawing little little gaps between the look, between the rocks. See if this 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 gate is all made of old stone. Yeah. How's that? Huh? Hmm. I don't overdo this. Now there's a good bit of darkness to go in there. Darkness to go in there. Let's have a look now. Now. Now I think we need to put in some. Do you know what we've forgotten? Always forget it, don't I? I bet you're all saying, yeah, he was forgetting the leaves on the tree, wasn't that what you were saying? Oh, no, he wasn't, because uh, these leaves on the tree, they take ages, don't they? Now, this is a mixture of blue and yellow and raw sienna, look. And, of course, it'll be darker than the stuff in the background. I'm going to put on some good yellowy stuff there. See that? Let it over the gate there. Another bit there, look. <laughs> this, is, this is the corner of the brush, the dabbing, look. Now, there's a real dark bit there, see? Let's, let's have it. Ah, look at that. Now, we have to just outline those rocks, and we're getting there, aren't we? What do I mean by outline the rocks? I'm going to put in some dark paint there, look. Bit there, bit there. Oh, that's not the right colour. Blue and brown. And a good dark shade. Uh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> now, I think... Uh, something else we've got to do, isn't there? Yes, let's get the small brush out here now. White paint and some bluebells, or whatever you call them. Look, I'm going to just dab a few little. Now, I'm going to put in my little uh, board, and then one more thing with the board done. I'm not going to finish with the board this time, because there's our board, isn't he? He's up there in the corner flying about. Now, I'd like to just finish off with just putting a nice bit of colour in the centre of this thing here, which just in there. 
And I think we're nearly there now. So, having said that to you, I'm afraid that's the end of the picture. But you remember, you can do this. So try it out and have some more fun. Frank has put together this fabulous acrylic special offer which comprises Frank's four brush set, 12 12 milliliter tubes of artist quality acrylic paint, Frank's Anyone Can Paint With Acrylics book, two acrylic lesson booklets and Frank's new Introduction to Acrylics DVD. It's superb value at only €39 Euro or £27 sterling. Telephone the numbers for your region on screen or visit www.simplypainting.com for Frank's full range of products.